Welcome to the JCTLM Members and Stakeholders Biennial Meeting and Workshop, Overcoming Challenges to Global Standardization of Clinical Laboratory Testing, Reference Materials and Regulations. My name is Gary Myers, and my presentation today will focus on what are the challenges to achieve standardized results. Clinical laboratory measurements are used to identify individuals with diseases or those at increased increased risk of disease, to guide treatment decisions, to monitor the success of treatment, and to assess the risk of disease recurrence. For optimal laboratory service, results from different measurement procedures for the same measure and should be equivalent within stated specifications, enabling the results to be used reliably for medical decisions and to reduce the risk for erroneous interpretations based on these test results. In the absence of standardized measurement procedures, patient sample results may differ substantially across commercial assays for a wide range of clinical measurands. Here are represented three different IVD manufacturers with assays that measure the same measurand. These assays are not standardized indicated by the different colored circles representing different results. This situation of non-standardized measurement procedures may result in incorrect diagnosis and treatment for patients, may hamper the use of medical decision values from clinical practice guidelines, and may lead to unnecessary retesting and possible unnecessary visits to healthcare providers. Also, non-standardized results could also make it difficult to monitor health trends. Standardized results indicated in this slide by the same color circles will enable results to be used reliably for medical decisions, thereby promoting better patient care. To achieve comparable results, all measurement procedures must measure the same quantity. In addition, the calibration of all measurement procedures should be standardized or traceable to a common reference system consisting of reference methods and materials. This figure represents the metrological traceability chain detailed in ISO 17511. I am sure you have seen various versions of this figure and are familiar with the calibration traceability process, so I will not spend time reviewing the detailed specific steps involved. The essential components of the reference measurement system are the definition of the, of the measure and reference measurement procedures and reference materials. Linked through this metrological traceability chain are national metrology institutes and other research institutions which provide primary and secondary reference materials and reference measurement procedures. Accredited reference measurement laboratories, which provide reference measurement analytical services. The IVD manufacturers, which provide calibrators and measuring systems and utilize value transfer protocols. And finally, the clinical diagnostic laboratories that measure patient samples. I want to focus on the materials used in the standardization process. The various reference materials used in the transfer protocols are key components in transferring the accuracy of the primary reference measurement procedure to the end user's routine measurement procedures. Reference materials are used to establish trueness of measurement procedures through calibration or to assess the trueness of the calibration of a measurement pro procedure. Uses may include the calibration of a measurement system, assessment of a measurement procedure, assigning values to other materials, and quality control. A reference material can only be used for a single purpose in a given measurement process. The availability and use of secondary or matrix-based reference materials is generally seen as a critical step to the standardization of any measure and. Because they are so important, the production of secondary reference materials needs to be done carefully and thoroughly. Their production occurs through several research and development stages. 
considering the substantial effort that goes into the production, certification, and distribution of clinical reference materials, a lot size large enough to meet the needs of the clinical community for five to 10 years necessitates the use of pools of patient samples rather than individual samples. So what are the important characteristics required for fit for purpose reference materials? The question, what is being measured, would seem like an easy one to answer. For many molecules of clinical interest, it is a relatively straightforward task to answer this question to define the measuring. For example, cholesterol. The cholesterol found in human serum can be defined by a single molecular structure with a known molecular formula. Subsequently, the determination of cholesterol for clinical purposes can be measured leading to a relatively complete definition of the measuring. However, in far too many cases, the answer to the question what is being measured is not as simple. An example of the standardization of an important clinical measuring for which complete molecular structure is more complex is human cardiac troponin I, a cardiac marker. Cardiac troponin I is a highly heterogeneous analyte that exists as a complex of several different troponin molecules. The troponin I complex undergoes substantial modification after release into circulation. These modifications may include oxidation, reduction, and phosphorylation, as well as degradation by proteases. Furthermore, the extent and nature of troponin modification, as well as the values obtained by immunoassay, are dependent on the time after myocardial infarction. Standardization of cardiac troponin I measurements requires a reassessment of the measuring to develop a suitable reference material. Second, achieving the meaningful comparison of results from measurement systems calibrated and or verified with different reference materials requires that each of the different materials delivers the same defined measuring to be measured. Next, the goal of any standardization effort is to provide measurements that are stable and consistent across time and space. To achieve this, the reference materials used must be both homogeneous and stable with respect to one or more specified properties, which have been established to be fit for their intended use in a measurement process. The homogeneity of a reference material refers to both the homogeneity of the material within one vial and the homogeneity between vials. Aliquoting large pools of reference materials into thousands of vials may take several hours. As a result, changes in the pool can occur during this time that may produce measurable differences in analyte concentration between vials. Therefore, evaluating the between vial homogeneity of the concentration of the certified analytes is critically important. Between vial homogeneity assessment is typically done by assaying the concentration of the certified analyte from multiple vials throughout dispensing the entire lot of reference material. The stability of a certified reference material must also be evaluated, including both the short-term and long-term stabilities. The short-term stability evaluation of reference materials aims to determine if the value assigned to the measuring changes in the time and under the conditions of shipment from producer to the end user. This is accomplished by subjecting the reference material to the temperature extremes expected in the duration of a shipment worldwide and then measuring the concentration of the measuring relative to a control sample maintained at long-term storage conditions. Long-term stability evaluation aims to determine if the certified values of the measuring remains valid during the lifetime of the reference material. Most importantly, a reference material must, be, must functionally behave the same as a patient sample during measurement by a routine procedure. It must be commutable. Because most clinical secondary certified reference materials are pooled samples that have undergone some type of processing, 
changes in the matrix or in the measure and itself can create differences in the way an assay behaves relative to an actual patient sample. In fact, there are probably more matrix-based reference materials prepared by IVD manufacturers by adding a primary pure substance into a matrix than are available fully prepared from certified reference material providers. When a matrix-based reference material proved to not be commutable with clinical samples when measured using one, sum, or all routine measurement procedures, it has limited utility in developing a complete reference measurement system. Commutability testing of a reference material using all routine measurement procedures in which it is exposed which it is expected to be used is essential. Most specific information concerning commutability of reference materials will be covered by Dr. Miller in his presentation. Finally, a certified reference material should have a certification report that includes the name of the material, the producer and producer's identification code for the material with a lot of identification, general description of the material, intended use, including information on commutability of the material consistent with the intended use, information about transport and instruction for appropriate conditions of storage, correct handling and safety, instructions for proper use, certified property values, each accompanied by a statement of measurement uncertainty, measurement procedures used to obtain property values, with full details where values are, de are dependent on the measurement procedures and date of certification and period of, val of validity. Challenges to achieve standardized clinical laboratory results are numerous and often difficult to solve. A lack of international coordination exists among reference material providers for what is needed. National Metrology Institutes provide a large number of certified reference materials listed in the JCTLM database, along with other international research institutions such as the European Commission's Joint Research Center and the National Institute for Biological Standards and Control, just to name a few. This slide shows the distribution of database entries for certified reference materials per country of origin. Also here lists the different organizations, NMIs, and research institution that supplies these different uh, reference materials. The NMI's primary focus is meeting the metrological needs within their respective country or region, which may hinder coordinating global needs for different reference materials. For example, of the 257 reference materials listed in the JCTLM database, there are many instances where multiple reference materials are listed for the same measure and. This duplication of effort may limit the use of valuable resources and time that could be used to develop other needed reference materials. However, there is value in redundant suppliers as long as the materials are equivalent, which may be the bigger challenge. Efforts are beginning to better prioritize and coordinate work among global producers to determine reference material needs for laboratory medicine. To help better coordinate prioritizing needs for standardization of measurements, the International Consortium for Harmonization of Clinical Laboratory Results, ICHCLR, was created in 2013. The ICHCLR reviews and prioritizes measure ends needing standardization harmonization based on the impact measure ends have in making medical decisions. Shown in this slide is the landing page for the ICHCLR website at www.harmonization.net. Information on current prioritization of 143 measure ends can be found um, under the measure and tab. The results of this work can be used as a guide for IVD manufacturers seeking information on standardization activities and for reference material producers seeking guidance on priority needs for reference materials in laboratory medicine. 
When there are multiple reference materials available for the same measuring, it is important that crossover validation has been done to assure comparability and consistent performance of these competing materials. While reference materials may degrade, go out of stock, or otherwise become unavailable over time, new reference materials providing equivalent traceability can in principle be produced. However, achieving the meaningful comparison of results from measurement systems calibrated and or verified with different reference materials requires that suitable materials are available, accessible, and truly provide equivalent traceability. To address this need, guidance for the direct one-time comparison of multiple materials was developed by the JCTLM as part of its protocol to certify reference materials for listing on the JCTLM database. The process for comparing certified values of the same measurement in multiple reference materials is part of the JCTLM quality system procedures. Specifics can be found at the website address shown on this slide. When reference materials and reference measurement procedures have been reviewed and certified by the JCTLM for conformity with the normative harmonized standards, it is important that IVD manufacturers use these tools to establish metrological traceability for their products to achieve comparable results across different routine measurement procedures. This information should be adequately today detailed in product information provided to end users. Dr. Graham Jones, Department of Chemical Pathology, St. Vincent's Hospital, Sydney, Australia, conducted a recent review of traceability information provided by four providers of immunoassays for steroids, estradiol, testosterone, and progesterone. Dr. Jones shared his unpublished results with permission to use in this presentation. In this slide for, for estradiol, Dr. Jones found that of the four systems reviewed, only the Beckman Coulter access specifically indicated in the product information traceability statement that traceability was to a JCTL listed isotope dilution mass spectrometry procedure. To be even more specific, the JCTLM database identification number for the IDMS procedure should have also been included. The other providers indicated traceability to IDMS in their respective statements, but did not indicate if the IDMS procedures were ones listed and certified on the JCTLM database. Roche indicated for its estradiol immunoassay, it used reference material CRM6004A, but did not specifically state that this CRM is JCTLM listed. In fact, this reference material is JCTLM listed and is provided by the National Metrology Institute of Japan. The other system providers did not indicate JCTLM listed reference materials. Similar lack of specific information was missing for testosterone and progesterone immunoassays. At the very least, end users of routine measurement systems should in insist the IVD manufacturers reference JCTLM listed reference materials and reference measurement procedures when available and used in their traceability calibration processes. Lack of validated commutable reference materials is the most significant challenge impacting efforts to achieve standardized laboratory results. Higher order matrix based reference materials that are not commutable with clinical samples makes them unsuitable for use in calibration hierarchies and may even contribute to non-comparable results if applied inappropriately or with inadequate validation. As I previously stated, Dr. Miller will cover commutability in more detail as part of his presentation. Unfortunately, the number of measurands that can be standardized is fairly limited in relation to the thousands of different measurand tests performed in laboratory medicine. The reasons for this are, are the lack of clearly defined measurands, reference methods, and or reference materials. Only 180 measurands have at least one reference material listed in the JCTLM database. And only 160 measurands have at least one reference measurement procedure listed. 
The fact is, for measure and standardization projects, we have been picking the low-hanging fruit or relatively easy measure range to work on. Standardization of measure range located higher on the measure range complexity tree, such as PSA, PTH, or PTINR, along with hundreds of others are technically more difficult and costly to achieve. There are alternatives to achieving comparable results when there are no suitable reference materials and reference measurement procedures for standardization. A new ISO standard, ISO 21151, Requirements for International Harmonization Protocols Establishing Metrological Traceability of Values Assigned to Calibrators and Human Samples, addresses one case of traceability of assigned and measured values described in Section 5.6 in Revised ISO 17511. This ISO standard specifies requirements for a protocol implemented by an international body to achieve equivalent results among two or more IVD medical devices for the same measuring for cases where there are no reference measurement procedures and no certified reference materials or international conventional calibrators commutable with human samples. In this case, the harmonization protocol defines the highest level of metrological traceability for the stated measuring. Dr. Miller will provide more insight into achieving comparable results through harmonization protocols described in ISO 21151 in his presentation. If we look again at the diagram representing the metrological traceability train for standardization, the NMIs and other producers have a role in developing reference materials and or reference measurement procedures. The manufacturer's role is using these tools to transfer the measurement accuracy to their specific products. However, the end users of commercially available IVD measuring systems at the bottom of the traceability chain really have no direct involvement in the metrological traceability standardization process except to select and put in use one of the IVD measurement systems in their laboratory. So what can laboratory do to ensure the measurement systems used in their, trace, in their, laboratory, in their laboratories produce standard, standardized results. Laboratories can request from the assays manufacturer documentation of the metrological traceability pathway linking their end user measuring system to references listed in the JCTLM database when applicable. If a harmonization protocol was used in accordance with ISO 21151, the laboratory should request information documenting this process. The laboratory should also enroll in EQA programs that use documented commutable materials to assess laboratory performance. This brings into play the very important role of EQA PT in assessing successful standardization of laboratory results. The IC8 CLR and the European Organization for External Quality Assurance Providers in Laboratory Medicine, EQUAM, have joined forces for an initial initiative called HALMA, Harmonization of Measurands in Laboratory Medicine through Data Aggregation. HALMA aims to collect and aggregate results from different EQA providers that use commutable materials. Combining results from various EQA providers may provide a powerful tool to evaluate and assess harmonization of measure aims through aggregated EQA data on an international basis. For more information on HALMA, visit the EQAM website provided on this slide. The journey to viable reference materials can be a long and difficult one. However, Given the importance of standardized laboratory results in laboratory medicine for improved patient care, this journey is a necessary one. Thank you.